Lego Spongebob is a line from my childhood that I really love. I think it's one of the most consistent Lego lines of all time. While sure, the newer Lego Spongebob sets, you know, the second half from like 2009 onward, were definitely a lot uh, less consistent and a lot less good than the older ones, I think they're still fantastic sets that, you know, anyone should buy, really. I recommend basically all these sets on this list for you guys. So, um... Uh, just a bit of fair warning before this. This uh, list is my opinion. I've gotten a lot of comments on um, on some of my rankings. You know, oh, your your ratings are too nitpicky and whatnot. But that's really how I like my sets. What I'm describing here is how I like the sets, not how I think you should like them. Or I'm not trying to convince you to like the sets more than any others. You know, I'm just saying that this is how I like the sets. For just like the small reasons are usually the best reasons, anyways. The theme lasted from 2006 to 2012 with 14 fantastic sets, so I'm going to go over all of them in this video, so let's get right into the ranking. In last place is set 3815 Heroic Heroes of the Deep. Now, this set definitely has just a lot of things that are just going for it. Like, it's a great set in my opinion, but it definitely has some flaws that make it worse than, say, the other Spongebob sets. I mean... First, let's talk about the minifigs, which are the best part of this set, the, the heroic Spongebob or whatever. I mean, he looks he looks pretty cool. I mean, my one problem with him is that his his, um, his pants are off legs. His legs are off color. His legs are off color. That's what I meant. His legs are off color which, from the other blue, which, you know, just kind of looks weird. And the fact that he doesn't have sleeves, I mean, that's kind of weird as well. I get, I get what they're going for here, but, you know, it's a little weird. You know, if it came out three years later, they could have had that dual molding on the arms where it's like the blue and the yellow. You know, it would have, I think it would have worked a lot better if that, if it happened then. Uh, but this figure is pretty great. The Patrick, uh, I think he's definitely a lot less good than the SpongeBob, to be honest. Uh, the Patrick has some, um, he has some color differences in his leg. The leg yellow is a light, looks a lot less like consistent than the torso yellow. Also, he just kind of has bland printing in general. I mean, just a star on his torso. It, it doesn't look good in my opinion. Uh, the best fig of the set is the plankton. It's the best variation of plankton we ever got from the SpongeBob sets. Uh, he has a cool little mechanical body uh, with the best uh, printing for a plankton head we got. We got, we've got one other ever and it was you know, it was still really good, but I like this one more. And we have a cool printing of the Cry Patty Seeker formula, which I think looks really nice. I think this one is, uh, you know, just as good as the other one. The other one, you know, is the bottle. This one's the actual formula itself, which is really cool. Um, moving on, the boat. Ah, this is where the set, like, really goes downhill for me. The boat's just such a, such a stupid build, in my opinion. I mean, the flick fire missiles aren't great. The, uh, the cockpit area, or whatever you'd like to call it. It just, it, it, it's kind of a flimsy build, you know? It felt like, it really feels like a bunch of different colors just piled onto one boat. You know, it's yellow. The color scheme does not work at all. Color scheme, you got the light blue with the red and the yellow. Ugh. Looks so weird. And for some reason, the blue is on top, and then it's like below the yellow. It's like layers of the colors. It just doesn't look right, in my opinion. And uh, there's just, it's just not a great set in my opinion. The boat definitely looks weird. The wheels are too small in my opinion. If they made them a little bigger, sure. Maybe it would have made it a little more proportional in my opinion. But um, yeah, this set definitely will come in last place on this ranking. And let's move on to the next set. Well, the sea. Up next on my ranking and in second to last place is Built Bob. Now, I don't really care about buildable figures in LEGO. In fact, this is actually probably my favorite buildable figure in LEGO because I don't, you know, I don't really care about him and I don't really collect him at all. And I really would like this one, but you know, he's um, muy expensive oso. That's probably not how it's said in Spanish, but I don't care. But uh, Build Bob, yeah, um, he looks pretty cool. Uh, he definitely has just a little edge over that last set because the last set seemed like kind of a little bit of just thrown in builds and whatnot. But this set, well, builds, build, you know what I mean. Well, this set, um, it's actually just one consistent thing, but it is a buildable figure, so I don't really care too much about it, to be honest, you know. Uh, it's a cool one, though. Like, the eyes move really coolly, and his face, and you can turn upside down his, uh, frown or whatever, his frown or smile, depending on how you look at it, you know, turn it upside down. Makes it look a whole, it's a whole nother story. But, um, other, uh, yeah, uh, it's really cool. It has a cool little plankton build, which honestly looks weird. I like the other plankton builds more, but, I mean, I guess it's more accurate to plankton with his, um, with the antennae and whatnot, which, which, while cool, does come with a setback if it just, it just looks really weird in my opinion. Otherwise than that, though, Build-A-Bob has a cool inside as well, you know. It looks really nice. It's kind of, 
Kind of reminds me of the episode Plankton from Spongebob. I, I can't believe I'm making the Spongebob, talking about a Spongebob episode in 20 fucking 20. Yeesh. I haven't, I haven't been a Spongebob fan of forever. But, you know, that episode where, uh, where, you know, Plankton takes over his, uh, Spongebob's body and whatnot, you know, it just reminds me of that, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool set in my opinion, definitely awesome, it's just a buildable figure, and I don't care about buildable figures too much, and it's really hard to compare to the other sets, to be honest, so let's move on from here. Well, the sea. Up next on the ranking is set 3816, Glove World, now this was another set that I've actually owned, I owned this one in the Heroic Heroes of the Deep, those were just two of them, I'll, I'll point out the rest when I get to them, you know what I'm saying, but um, yeah, this set's actually pretty great in my opinion. While the builds are a little weaker, I will admit the minifigs are pretty fantastic in the set. So, why not start with the minifigs? Uh, we got the Spongebob, who's actually an exclusive print for the head print here, which I think looks really nice. It's definitely a more happy Spongebob, you know, compared to the normal one. I definitely do prefer the normal one, but this is definitely a good alternative print to have. Uh, moving on, we have uh, the Sandy. Yeah, the Sandy's um, not exclusive to the set, as she also came in Sandy's Rocket, which is a set that will come later on the list. But she's still a cool figure to get in a $20 set, because, you know... That's basically the most expensive set on the aftermarket, which is, you know, kind of crazy. I mean, I think build a a little more expensive, but that's, like, that's up there, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, moving on, we have this uh, fish, this uh, clerk, this fish uh, ice cream man. I think this is such a cool figure to get in these sets. I really liked it when we got the fishes in these, like, oh, SpongeBob sets. It definitely didn't happen enough, but when it did, man, were they were they bangers. But uh, this this is just a great minifig. I'm glad I have this one. You know, his he has a cool little torso, which, you know, Lego's actually used a lot more um, recently for non-fish minifigs, which I think because it's, you know, yellow printing on the chest and whatnot, so it's really cool. His head is awesome and, you know, just looks awesome. Moving on to Patrick. Uh, yeah, he's a great figure, honestly. The detailing on him is second to none. On it, it, he is really cool with his bib and whatnot. You know, I wish the pants were different, probably, like, either a different print or they had, like, the ice cream stains as well because they don't and the um and the torso and the head do so it does look a little weird in that sense but otherwise than that i think this minifig is a pretty awesome minifig moving on we have the builds i like the ferris wheel build a lot actually it inspired the joker land uh the penguin ferris wheel which i think might be better just because of the design on it but this one looks really cool honestly i really like it and i'm this is a cool feature where it spins i really actually like that you know it was a pretty cool build, a play build, and also the Glove World uh, entrance itself is probably the weakest part of the set because it definitely is, like, skimpy, but it's still a cool little build, honestly. Like, the, the entrance way, I really like the ice cream sand. Yeah, it's not great, but, like, the sticker tile next to it with the menu actually looks really cool, and I'm glad they added that to for some design features, but uh, that really encapsulates my love for this set. The set Glove World was great. It really set a great price as well. I mean, it was only 20 bucks for this set, which, I mean, compared to some sets today, $20 this is a great deal, especially with four minifigs. I mean, I love this set a lot. This set's fantastic. I don't need to ramble on about it anymore. Let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, the sea. Coming up next on the ranking is the Bikini Bottom Express. Now, this is probably the first fantastic set on the list. This set is awesome. For a $20 set, I'm going to say this again. For $20, these sets are fantastic. But for $20, this one, I mean, look at what you get here. You get a cool bus build, which is just awesome. And you get two other cool builds. I'm not sure the bus stop's a little bland. You still got that cool ticket station. But let's go more in depth here. I'm going to start the minifig. Starting out with the Spongebob. This is the generic Spongebob we got in a lot of the earlier sets. The 2006 and 7 wave specifically. And um, he's a pretty great fig, honestly. For an average Spongebob, I mean, that's a pretty great fig to get. Um, I really like him a lot. I mean, I, I, have a, I have about two copies of him. You know, they're both faded. But I got a new head for one. So, you know, now I have, I have a good Spongebob that I can use in videos now. Which, I mean... Looks really dope because, you know, Spongebob always somehow ends up making cameos in my fucking videos. I, I don't know. It's just easy character to write in. So, um, yeah, for sure. A pretty great iteration of the character. Moving on to Patrick. He's, um, he's the other generic figure in the set. Well, not generic. You know, I mean, he's a generic Patrick figure from Lego. Uh, he came out in a lot of the 2006 and 7 sets, you know, just like this Spongebob variation. And, you know, he's a great figure, too, honestly. I bought a new... I bought a new Patrick uh, not that long ago, the same time I bought the new Spongebob head, so I can use him in videos now, and he looks, I mean, he's such a great figure. One thing weird about Patrick is I've noticed that those legs always break easier, they're like brown bricks, they just always break. It's so weird, honestly, I mean, if you've, if you've had that phenomenon too, you know, put it down in the comments, because it's, it's happened to me a lot before, and it's at least three times it's happened to me, and it's very, it's very odd, but it's... That Patrick's definitely a cool figure. I, of course, the short sprinting don't go all the way around, which I thought would have looked, which would have looked better. But you know, it was 2006 when this came out, so can't be asking too much of Lego, to be honest. And the uh, torso print's one of my favorite torso prints of all time in Lego. It's a great torso print. I mean, it looks so good for like 
you know, some some loser taking off his shirt or whatever, like, oh, cool, and then he takes it off and he looks like that, you know, it's like, it's like Gregory Animations, but take off his shirt, you know what I'm saying? Um, the last minifig is the fish minifig, which is a bus driver, of course. I mean, what a great minifig, to be honest. The head, of course, fantastic, but the torso and legs actually match really great, and, like, it's a cool, it's a cool transportation suit right now, and the fact that, um, the fish has that uh, hat, that hat, it actually works out really well for him for, as a bus driver. I think it works really well. I really like this minifig a lot. I think it's it's probably the best minifig in the set. Moving on to the builds, uh, I'm going to start with the most obvious one, the bus itself, which is just a fantastic build, honestly. I mean, the orange color is a great feature to it. I mean, it looks exactly like the buses from SpongeBob, and the window pieces just look great on it. And not to mention the interior. The interior itself is fantastic. I mean... I mean, it's fantastic for the space you have, you know what I'm saying? Because it has, like, it just has a bunch of seats. It's kind of like what the the Lego airplane on interiors, you know? It's, um, while I, I guess you could say, oh, it's planned. They could have fit a couple more things in here. I, I think that's a bit nitpicky, which, you know, some of the reasons I like sets are nitpicky, but, and some of the reasons I dislike sets are nitpicky, but I feel like that just doesn't pertain to my opinion. But, um, the way I feel here is that this is just... This is just a fantastic interior, you know, maybe a little bland if you think like, if you think like that, but like, I still like it a lot for the space that it's given, and I think this set's fantastic. Let's move on to the next set on this ranking. Well, on the sea. Moving on to the next spot of the ranking, which belongs to set 3817, The Flying Dutchman. Now, I actually really like this set. I think it has some fantastic parts, and I think there's just some map parts in it too, so um, let me just get into it real quick. Starting out with the minifigs, we have the Flying Dutchman himself, which is just a fantastic minifig, honestly, except for really, there's really one thing I don't like about this minifig. It, it just looks kind of weird to have the Flying Dutchman, you know, the design of himself, like just on one face print, it really looks weird. Like if they had a beard or something, I think it would have looked just a lot better. Like it really does look weird, but otherwise than that, you know, there's some cool pieces. We, of course, we had like the molded genie bottom for his legs, which I think looks really cool. And his hat piece is terrific as well. It just, just a pretty great figure in my opinion. Moving on, we have the pirate SpongeBob. And I mean, he's just, you know, he's, he's sitting there looking like a pirate. You know, he looks, he actually is designed pretty well, honestly. I don't think I have really any problems with him. Otherwise, then of course, I remember correctly, his uh, pirate hat. He had to have like a stud in there to make it work right, which I mean, I don't, it's not really a problem. It's just a fun fact, to be honest. It's nothing against the set, nothing towards it either. Moving on, we have Patrick, which, you know, just a great minifig. In fact, this one comes with two accessories. He has the treasure map and the shovel, which is just, you know, so it's always cool to have a minifig come with accessories. It's not going to ruin the fucking fig, unless they're bad, of course. But these aren't. So this is definitely a cool figure. You know, the eye patch design for Patrick's head, I think that looks really cool. Uh, you know, you got the torso print, which I guess is like, uh, it'll work well if you were like me, a brick filmer, and you were just like, okay, I need a beach scene. That would work really well, but like, I don't see it working anywhere else, and it's, it's definitely a weird torso print. The legs aren't even that bad. Legs are anything special to talk about uh moving on to the builds um so with the builds we have a cannon you know cannon whatever moving on to the uh little island structure rock structure you know it's a it's definitely an interesting build i mean i actually like this a lot uh with, just because you know you can see the vegetation which actually is a pretty cool feature you know i wouldn't expect that maybe a palm tree would have been cool if they added it here though i'm not gonna lie also to mention the little treasure hole that's in the um, structure is pretty cool, but it is a little underwhelming You know, it's it's just a small structure build that's just there to really increase the price in my opinion because uh, The other build is the flying Dutchman's boat, which is which is a pretty good build actually I mean, it's very small and it doesn't have an interior Which I really wish like it would, it would come out with like a big a big flying Dutchman's uh, ship with a a lot of interior and whatnot, kind of like what they do with um, what they do with the Dermshrang ship, or what they do with a lot of the Pirates of the Caribbean sets. But um, of course, I can't I can't ask some of that in a thirty dollar playset for SpongeBob, of course. You know, uh, it's still a pretty great ship, though. I really like the detailing with like the crow's nest and the um, and the sail itself with that cool um, sticker. And uh, I really do I really do think this set is actually pretty dope, honestly, with um, some of the detailing on the side of the ship as well, like the cannons. I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, really. I don't know if it's 
really the first set to inspire anything or whatever because I never really looked at the Pirates of the Caribbean sets. You know, I wasn't a Pirates of the Caribbean fan. Never really could say I am. You know, maybe I'll make a ranking on them, the sets one day when I look more into them. But otherwise than that, uh, this set's pretty fantastic, honestly. It's a it's a really great set. And I, I can't wait to rebuy this set one day, to be honest. You know, I've owned it before and you know what? It's going to be great to own again. So uh, let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, the sea. Moving on to the next set on the ranking. This is one of two iterations of this um, iconic building, I guess I would say. Uh, the Krusty Krab Adventure, set 3833. Now, this is a smaller iteration of the Krusty Krab, even though it's at the same price point. But, you know, even if we did inflation, you know, first one came out in 2006. This one came out in 2009, which... Not that much inflation, but, you know, there was a recession, doesn't it? You know, just rambling on about bullshit right now. But this set is actually pretty fantastic, in my opinion. Now, where my main problem falls at is the interior, but I'll get into that when I get into that. Uh, I'm going to start with the minifigs, uh, starting with the SpongeBob. An original iteration of SpongeBob. This is um, always a great sight for me to see. You know, especially with this one, which is actually a pretty unique one with the... um. The smiling face, you know, with the teeth being really shown. I mean, this is actually a really cool iteration. And I've seen this used a lot in brick films because this was... Actually, this is a lot of people's first sets in... I mean, at that first SpongeBob sets, of course. But, um, you know, it was definitely a great... It was. It's a great set to uh, be the first of. And, I mean, this is a great iteration of SpongeBob. You know, it's kind of normal, but it does It does feel different in a way, you know, because of the teeth. It, it's just a different iteration. I'm rambling on about bullshit right now. Um, otherwise, in SpongeBob, of course, we have Patrick. Everything for him is pretty much the same from the 2006 one, except the head, which is a new, like, new print, which is actually a pretty good print, honestly. Another another one of these prints that doesn't stray too far from the figure and, you know, just works out well for the set. Especially, this print definitely works out well for the set because, you know, it's his tongue out, he's out the crusty crab, you know, looking for food, you know, the gabagoo, the gabagoo. But, uh, otherwise than that, we have the Mr. Krabs, which... Chad Mr. Krabs right here. Of course, he's on the sixth one, which will come up later on the list. He's also Chad Mr. Krabs. But, you know, Chad Mr. Krabs here. Andrew does bricks right here. Chaotic Studios, you know it. But he has a great face expression, honestly. Uh, it's very it's very similar to the one in the 2006, except for it's wide open, which this is what I like about LEGO SpongeBob. When they, um, when they reintroduced the line in 2009 after its year break or whatever, and it was all rebranded and whatever, you know, they, um... They changed the iterations a lot. They tried to, but they kept, they stuck to a similar formula where they, they just changed certain things, like just the littlest things, like his mouth's open in this iteration. In the 2006 one, his mouth was closed. So, you know, it just, it, the way they did it made it so unique. And it really does, it really does fascinate me a lot. And it really looks good. Otherwise than that, um, the builds themselves, the paddy wagon is the best build of the set. I mean, what a fantastic build to add into a, um, Krusty Krab set. I almost wish we got in 2006. We would have had the perfect Lego set, in my opinion. But um, it's a great build. I, it's so it, it's so nice. I mean, Mega Bloks tried to recreate this with that, which was, I mean, it's Mega Bloks. Let's be real here. But I mean, the the flag on the back is even is even accurate to the film, which is just fantastic. I mean, what a great build. I mean, you see, it looks it literally looks like a burger, like a Krabby Patty, if you would. It looks so great. Uh, you know, the wheels on the bottom are very small, which is very accurate to how it was originally. That was, this is definitely a cool one. I, I really like that build a lot. Uh, otherwise than that, the Krusty Krab build itself, this is where the set really hinders for me and really a lot of people. Because, um, the exterior is alright. I mean, the Krusty Krab sign on the top of the Krusty Krab instead of having a sign like in the 2006 one is definitely weird. And, uh, the flag on top is definitely not a cool feature at all. But, um, the interior is just... Um, yeah, it, it's really bare bones, really bare minimum. There's, like, nothing on the interior. I mean, we get one little safe area as Mr. Krabs' office, and then we get, uh, a little cash register area, which, I mean, doesn't even look right. I mean, it's all inverted and shit. Like, it would look right if the Krusty Krab was, like, you know, serving to the customers outside, and, like, the inside was just... You know, there isn't really even a kitchen area, to be honest, and there's just... There's one little table area that's supposed to be outside that you could put inside, but, um... No, the set's interior really brings it down a lot for me. That's why it's only this this low, honestly. I mean, I really wish it could I really wish it could have been better, but the interior is not that great. I mean, otherwise than that though, pretty great set in my opinion. Let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, the sea. Coming up next on the ranking is set 3834, Good Neighbors at Bikini Bottom. Now this set 
is one that I really like a lot. I really do love it. I mean, from the minifigs to, well, the main build I really like, but some of the other builds just kind of turned me off from the set. But, um, yeah, let's just get right into the minifigs. Starting out, we have the SpongeBob, who's one of these just original printings. I'm really, I really dig that in this 2009 through 2012 wave, we just got unique printings, which is I just really cool because usually we never get stuff like this. Usually from the old wave, we get, we get a couple, but it would be like, a different face that was a much different expression but now we're getting we're getting the same we're getting the same like emotion conveyed in different faces it's really cool and you know it's a face we've seen in the show a lot that's why like it's a uh, specifically from an episode i forgot dude i forgot i haven't seen spongebob in forever but it, it you know you've seen that you've seen that image a million times on fucking the internet and you know it Otherwise than that, the sponge drop's a pretty great fig. Moving on, we have the Patrick, who's actually just a normal fig. He's an actually different iteration, but he's still a pretty cool fig, in my opinion. I definitely love this Patrick a lot. Moving on, we have the Squidward. This is where the mini figs get really fucking good. This Squidward is an amazing figure. The molded head, I mean, the molded head's so great. I, this is one of the best things LEGO ever did, was change the, um, the original printed head to a molded head. And it looks, it just turned out really nice. I really want this set also because of that molded head Squidward. That's just a really cool figure. And, uh, you know, the colors match just like they do. Uh, they didn't really do that, actually, on the 2006 figure. But they match all through here, and it's just, it's a really nice figure. Before we get into the builds, I really want to talk about this Gary build, which we get one in an older set that will be covered later, of course. But, I mean, this one has a pink shell. The older one had an orange shell. And, I mean, the pink shell, it just looks so much better. It really does. I mean, it's it's a great add, it's a great additive to this figure, honestly. I really like it a lot, and I'm, it's really good. Um, moving on to the builds, I guess I'm going to start out with the big build of the set, which is the uh, SpongeBob's house, which... It's a pretty great SpongeBob's house, in my opinion. Uh, there, are, I think the other two are better, but I really do like this one a lot. Actually, maybe this is the second best, but um, this is the second biggest. You know, they just got smaller every time we kept evolving from uh, SpongeBob houses. You know, it's definitely a really good one, and it's actually probably my favorite interior of any SpongeBob's house. You know, with all the um, all the portraits and all the pictures on the wall and whatnot, I think that's really cool. You know, the um, the chairs and shit we get for the house, the chair, the bed, you know, the the TV, I think that's all really cool, and it really adds to this this cool house. I mean, my main problem with this set is that a lot of the um a lot of the stuff that comes in it feels like an accessory pack, which just I don't get. I really don't get why they did it like that. I guess it was to up the price point, but I really think they could have just added like you know another Squidward's house or or Patrick's house instead. It would have been a lot better if they did that, in my opinion. But um. You know, the SpongeBob's house is pretty great. You know, it has four leaves on the top instead of three, which is actually more accurate when you look at it. Um, definitely really cool. And um, the SpongeBob's house I really like a lot. You know, the other builds, the, um, they're all there. You know, I think I like the boat build a lot. I don't really care for the cannon in the back, but um, I still think it's a pretty good build. You know, kind of skimpy, but basically all the LEGO boat builds are. Um, otherwise than that, it, 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 the mini builds are just all right. I mean, the grill, I guess, is cool. You know, the SpongeBob's bed is really similar to the other one, except I like the first one more than I like any of the other ones. And, um, the Gary's Bull, I guess, is cool. It's just a stickered piece, but it looks cool. I mean, the it's just a bunch of mini builds, which I don't care for, to be honest. And it really was just put in to up the price point of this set. So, I mean... It, it just, that's where my negatives come with this set, but otherwise than that, it's actually a really, really good set, and it's one that I really want to buy. Unfortunately, it's one of the ones that I actually go for more secondhand. It's, it is, it is a weird thing, but it does go for more secondhand. But, um, I really do hope to buy this in the future, and I really can't wait to. Moving on to the next set on the ranking. Well, on the sea. Up next on the ranking is set 3831, Rocket Ride. This set has some great builds and minifigs, so let me get right into it. Uh, starting out with the minifigs, we have the astronaut characters, uh, the astronaut form of these characters, of course. Uh, starting out, we have SpongeBob, who um, just looks pretty great here, honestly. There's no like, there's no color differences like in the superhero SpongeBob, and I think he just looks really great. You know, the, um, the logo on his astronaut suit looks really cool. You know, it really fits with the theme of this set. And, uh, you know, the fact that he comes with a jellyfish net's pretty cool, too, because we get only one other set I know of that we get a jellyfish set in, which was a set from, um, the year before this, which what is gonna come up later on the list. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's, uh, pretty, he's a pretty good figure. I mean, the short, uh, light bluish-gray legs are pretty cool. I don't think we've ever gotten those before, if I'm correct. I'm not sure, though. I'll look up Bricklink later and see if we, if I, we did. But, uh, moving on, we have the Patrick in his astronaut suit, which is basically the same things I'd have to say about the SpongeBob. Very consistent figure that just 
looks cool. I mean, the torso to me looks a lot more weird than this one drop one. I will say that, but um, otherwise than that, yeah, pretty great figure. Otherwise than that, we have the Sandy figure, and this is the first time we actually got a Sandy figure. I know we got her again in Glove World, and it's the same figure. But I mean, this is one of the figures I think LEGO just perfected, really, if I'm going to be real here. I really like everything they did with this figure. You know, I think she looks very accurate to the show and whatnot, and I think it's just a great figure. You know, the, the headpiece, the dome, you know, it's just, it works really well. I think it would have worked better for um, the Mysterio that we got a couple of years back if we got that dome instead of the one that we did. But it, it doesn't matter, to be honest. That's kind of an off-topic tangent. But I still think this figure is really cool. You know, the molded head's awesome. Moving on to the builds, first we have this little uh, moon buggy type thing. Uh, I, I don't really like this build at all. I think this is just kind of a stupid build, you know. It, 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 it's really, it, half of it's wheels. It's The proportions are so off on this build, you know. It's all big wheels and a very small vehicle with a cart in the back, which is it's just a stupid build in my opinion. I don't really care for it. Uh, moving on, we have the loading bay, the loading dock, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, This is a pretty t fantastic build in my opinion, and the play feature is really cool. You know, you lift up your figures to the um, to the sticker piece uh, door for the uh, rocket so they can move, enter in, which is just a cool feature in my opinion. It's a really cool build, and I'm glad we got it in a set because this set, I believe, is only $30 when it came out, and that's that's a really good deal for what you get in the set. And uh, yeah, this loading bay is pretty great, actually. Uh, we also have a little a little area, like a little area with like a flag and some jellyfish and some uh, kelp or whatever, you know? It, it, it's just an alright build. It's it, it's more to uh, get the price point up there. I guess I guess this is what thirty dollars sets look like in two thousand seven. If so, we're we're getting scammed. <laughs> but um, we also have the rocket. The main reason you'd get this set now. This rocket is a fantastic build. The supports work really well. Not to mention that they make the build just look a lot nicer in general. And then you have you just have a bunch of sticker pieces which add a lot of design to the um to the fucking rocket itself which look really nice i mean it just it just gives this thing a cool cartoony feel to it which looks just just beautiful and then we move to the um the top of the build which has this um cool dome piece i don't know if they have lego ever used it before probably i just don't know about it but it's just a really cool piece that adds to that round top which makes it look so nice the interior is pretty cool as well. You know, you have some computer areas, some resting areas, a piloting area. It's just, it's a really cool area. You know, a tool handling area. It's just really cool in my opinion. I really do like this, um, this area, this uh, interior a lot. I think it's just, you know, it's not bland. It's not empty like a lot of Lego sets would have done at this price point. I really do think it's cool. And I, this set's really great in my opinion. The rock is just fantastic. Everything else is fantastic. This set definitely belongs here. And let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, the sea. Up next on the ranking is set 3832, The Emergency Room. This has always been a set that I really, really wanted. This is just such a fantastic set, but it was also one of those 2007 sets, this and Sandy's Rocket, which, you know, kind of had a limited release, from what I've heard, at least. I wasn't, I wasn't a big Lego, I wasn't even a Lego fan in 2007, I was fucking, I was like three when this set came out. So, um... This set is actually pretty fantastic, though. Um, starting out with the minifigs, we have the SpongeBob, who's exclusive, which, I mean, an exclusive SpongeBob in these sets is pretty it's pretty dope, uh, especially this one. He has some bandage area around his head, which is really cool, and it really fits the theme of this set, which, I mean, is just awesome to get. I mean, the fact that they gave us this and not just the normal SpongeBob is fantastic. The next minifig is the Patrick, who is just the normal Patrick. I've covered him before. Uh, moving on, we have the Doctor, the Fish Doctor in the set. I call him Fish Doctor. What the fuck does it matter? Um, he's a really cool figure. I mean, he's also an exclusive. It's great that we see these figures in the set, and we aren't just saying, you know, SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, which is what we see in a lot of sets. This set, it's really cool that we get this figure, also because he's very accurate to the Doctor in the show. It's it's awesome that we get this figure. This is one that you wouldn't expect, and this isn't a build you would expect. But, um... It's really cool. Yeah, I really like this figure a lot. You know, just the detailing on his head is really cool. And his torso print being exclusive. I mean, ah, oh, it, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Right in the middle. Otherwise than that, we have uh, the build itself, the emergency room, and the ambulance. Starting with the ambulance. Ambulance is a weird one. It has this green underlayer, uh, which is full of these, um, I don't know how to describe them. They're like hatch almost pieces. They're they're weird pieces, but they're it's this underlayer of pieces, which I mean... I guess it, which I mean, it, it gives a good contrast on the um on the rest of it, but it definitely feels weird. Uh, the uh, rest of the ambulance, uh, it has a it has a working door, but you can put the stretcher in and take it out of, which I think is really cool that they actually put that there. You know, 
you know, it's kind of like the Arkham ambulances, but a lot smaller. It's a really, it looks really wide, but I doubt it is. It also has a, um, a really cool sticker piece on the side. I believe it's a sticker of that, um, of that, uh, cross, the anchor cross or whatever. Uh, it, it's really cool, and I really like the detailing on this ambulance a lot. It's a really cool build. Um, moving on to the emergency room itself. This is my favorite part of this set by far. Um, the build is built on a base plate. Let's start there. Uh, the same one that it's on the built on the same place plate that the Krusty Krab is built on, which does mean this is a pretty small build, but it's still really good. I mean, starting out with some little things in the build. I mean, to start, we have that uh, parking spot to the right, which is just a cool detail that they didn't just make it dead space and they made it a parking spot because a lot of time it would just be made dead space but otherwise than that the emergency room build is just fantastic the exterior is just it has so much detailing it's like sandy's rocket where it has all those cartoony uh, pieces with all the pr stickers on them which looks really cool and it has a cool it has a cool emergency room sticker with that um arch on it which i think the detailing on the set's really cool um the interior is a little different i really li i like it a lot with the stickered piece of like spongebob's um might be printed of spongebob's uh x-ray or whatever you know it really has a storyline the set has a storyline it's like the modulars i covered it has a storyline which is pretty cool um you know, it has a weird, it has a reception area. There's, it's definitely a cool set, and I really like the interior a lot. I like the exterior a lot. I think it's, it's really great. I love this set, and um, yeah, it belongs this high on the list. Let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, the sea. Up next on the ranking is set 4981, the Chum Bucket. This is the last Lego SpongeBob set I've got, and I got it about five years ago, so that really shows. How much I've gotten out of this theme and just out of the show in general, you know, in the past five years or whatever. But, um, no, this is a fantastic set, if I'm going to be honest here. The builds are great, just fantastic, and the minifigs are pretty alright. So, um, and there's some interesting minifigs, so let's just get right into those. Uh, first off, we have the SpongeBob, who, of course, is a unique printed, uh, head, which is really cool. You know, it's a scared face, and this one's used a lot, and I really like this SpongeBob a lot. I, it's just such a good figure, honestly. The scared expression looks really good. It just looks really good. Um, moving on, we have the, um, the Plankton, which is just Plankton. We get him in other sets, you know. But he does have a really cool expression. He does really look accurate to Plankton from the show. Um, otherwise than that, we have these two robot minifigs. Um, the robot SpongeBob and the robot, um, the robot, uh, customer. Uh, they're both based off, they're both from actual SpongeBob episodes. I know that for sure, and I remember that. But, um, yeah, they're, they're really alright minifigs. Their arms come off so easily, though. Like, I own the set, and their arms just come off. Like, you can just move around, and those, those arms are so loose. It's, it's ridiculous, to be honest. But, um, but otherwise than that, they're actually, you know, pretty cool figures. Um, moving on, we have the Chum Bucket itself, which is the build of the set. And it's a pretty great build, honestly. The, um, the fist is, like, my main problem with this build, because it's so hard to keep intact, and it's so hard to get in the right place. It's... I mean, I guess it was when I built it. Maybe it's different if I just re rebuild it. Because I have the set built, but, like, the fist part's, like, not there. It's just, like, I took it out. For I didn't take it out. It just, like, it was, like, it kept breaking on me. So I took it out, and I'm going to try and repair it sometime soon. But, uh, no, it's still... At least it's a really cool feature that looks nice. Um, the Chum Bucket itself... I think the exterior is really good and really accurate to the show, and I really do like it a lot, especially even if those sticker pieces, you know, oh, they might seem unnecessary, but they're really good. The doors printed, which is really cool, and those doors just look really nice. Those doors are amazing. A lot of these doors on these old SpongeBob sets just look great. Um, the interior, the bottom, there's no interior, which is kind of a... Uh, I kind of don't like that at all, but there is like a rear a containment cell a changing cell if you will uh, That's really good. It's a really good build. I don't have it built anymore Unfortunately, I plan on rebuilding it, but it's really good and it's it's just it has a lot of detailing on the front a lot of stickers Which is the main problem with it, but um no, it still looks really good Um the top floor is the best part of the set You know, there's a lot of detailing with like the Karen the uh, piece itself the computer the Karen uh Plankton's wife the piece. It's just really good the stick. It's a sticker piece. Yeah, but it looks it just looks really good I mean otherwise than that we have the cool Krabby Patty area where you like put the Krabby Patty in and like they, It examines it with a cool printed piece on it if, might I add and it's just really good I mean just the whole set is really great. It's just a dope set to be honest It's I really like it a lot. I mean the detailing's fantastic the exterior looking exactly like it You know, I don't really want to go into the the fucking catapult, which is just a stupid build or I mean, the, the, um, the tank's actually a really good mini build in the set, which I really like a lot. That's definitely a cool build, but, I mean, this set's just fantastic. It definitely belongs this high, and, um, let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, beyond 
Tennessee. Moving on to the next set on the ranking, it's set 4892 Mrs. Boss Bounding School. This is just another one of these fantastic sets. I mean, all these sets have been great, really. Most, at least all. Well, basically all of them. But, uh, let me start with the minifigs. The, um, the SpongeBob is a cool, like, just iteration, a cool variation of the normal one, which, you know, we saw a lot in the, old, in the newer sets, like the, um, the ones post-2007, but, like, uh, we saw a couple in the older ones, and this is definitely, like, the most normal of the ones that we've gotten, and it's really cool, to be honest. I mean, that tongue-out expression actually looks just really cool, to be honest. I mean, and the fact that they have the antenna on him, which, um, is based off the episode Boating Squad, I remember that for certain, where, uh, Patrick's giving him cheats from, a uh, Raid or whatever. In fact, uh, speaking of Patrick, we're moving on to Patrick right now. He's a normal Patrick figure, you know talked about him before just an amazing figure and he actually has the uh, walkie-talkie the radio in this um in this set to uh, talk to SpongeBob over that antenna which is really really cool that this is really just based off one it's really like accurate to an episode and it was really based off that one episode which is just awesome um otherwise than that we have the Mrs. Puff Mrs. Puff has shown up in two sets and this is the normal iteration and this figure is so great the fact that Lego somehow made that figure look like that instead of like a minifigure form which would have been looked weird it's so great. It just looks so cool and it looks so accurate. I really like it a lot. The face print looks really good for her. I think that's I think that's very accurate to what the face print normally looks like for Mrs. Puff. And I think that's just it's just a great iteration of the figure. Uh, the builds themselves, I'm gonna start with that. I'm not the biggest fan of the racetrack, but the racetrack actually isn't the majority of the set from what I can tell. Otherwise, I like the cool wall thing. I wish it was a little less um I don't know. I, I don't really just care for the racetrack. I think it's just kind of a it's kind of a, it's kind of something to get more fucking people to buy it because of it. It felt more like a gimmick. But the boat build I think is really cool in this set. To be honest, I really like the boat build a lot. Um, otherwise than that, we have the boating school itself, which is just so great. It has that that four way walkway into the school, which is really great. I really like that that um that scenery that adds to the set itself. Uh, the school itself, I'm sure. I mean, sure, it's a little small, and the exterior is really good. It's really accurate to the um, show, and the interior, yeah, it's a little cramped, but I think it's so good for what they got with the desks and the, um, it looks like a classroom, to be honest. It's what you could make of a classroom with that little amount of space. It's really cool. And then you have the, um, you have the lighthouse, which, sure, there's not, yeah, yeah, there's not much interior to it. It kind of reminds me of Sandy Rocket design-wise with all the stickered color, like all the stickered cartoony pieces and the color variation, I think, it, but, like, the top is really cool, and, I mean, this set's just awesome. Let's be honest here. This set is just awesome. I really, really want to get this set soon enough, and I really hope I do. It's just such a fantastic set. Uh, otherwise than that, let's move on to the next set on the ranking. Well, the sea. Up next on the ranking is set 3818 Bikini Bottom Undersea Party. Now, this was, I believe, in uh, order of like set numbers. This is the last set to ever release from the SpongeBob line, and it's just a fantastic set. I mean, a way to end it off with a bang, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, this set's fantastic. I mean, let's start with the minifigs, obviously. The SpongeBob is a very, very unique print. It's very aesthetically pleasing to this set. And he has this, um, his face is, uh, is, of course, like a smiling face. Just another iteration of SpongeBob's smiling face. But with a, um, with like a, uh, I don't know, a flower necklace, um, hanging off the bottom to show the party aesthetic of this set. And it's really, it's really nice to see that we got themed figures for this set, which was just a great thing to add. Um, moving on, we have the Patrick, who's pretty similar to the SpongeBob, except I like his, I kind of like the head print a little more. The head print looks a little more Chad, in my opinion. It just looks pretty great, honestly. Uh, you know, his leg print's the same as everything else, but his torso print also has a flower necklace, you know, just keeping on with the theme. Uh, moving on, we have Mrs. Puff, which is a weird figure decision, in my opinion. It's a weird figure decision. I didn't think they would put a Mrs. Puff in a, um, party set, but I think Lego might have been like, oh yeah, we know this is gonna be our last SpongeBob set from, uh, for at least, at the least a while, you know, because they haven't come out with another one yet, and, you know, they lost licensing after this, so... That really screwed everything up, but um, they were but so I guess they just wanted to release Mrs. Puff in one of the newer uh, sets instead of one of the older sets. But I mean, she while she does feel off color here, she's still a really great figure. I mean, she has the same print, so she has like a print of a flower, you know, keeping on with the consistency of the set. But uh, yeah, I still think she's great. She has a different expression than from the Mrs. Puff Boating School set, so that you know it's kind of good to get a unique expression. And, uh, yeah, she's a pretty great fig. Moving on, we have the Squidward, who is b basically the one from the 2000, from the, um, Good Neighbors and Bikini Bottom. Except for the fact 
that he um he has a different torso print with the uh with the flower necklace you know just keeping the consistency of the set he's still a great figure you know just fantastic and um we're, let's move on to the build of the set i'm gonna start with some of the smaller ones like we have all this um we have all this party uh material like a dj stand you know a like a popsicle of ice cream stand. I don't know what you would call it here. It's just a dessert stand. That's what I would say. A dessert stand. And we have some, um, we have some like, uh, playground things like a seesaw and a, um, uh, t I don't know what you would call the other one. A fucking twisting, uh, sir. It goes in circles, you know, it just spins around. But, uh, they're all pretty interesting mini builds. I definitely like the, um, I like the DJ one a lot. And I think the dessert stand's pretty cool. The other two I don't really care for as much. But I definitely do like the, I like the other two a lot. I like the detailing of, like, the balloons and the, um, the, uh, the tree, the, uh, shrubbery pieces on the, um, on the dessert stand. I think that's pretty great. And on the DJ station, I really like the, the records that we get for, um, the DJ to use themselves, which is pretty cool. And the speaker builds are really cool, too. The fact that they use the chest for, um, it just looks really, it looks really aesthetically pleasing to the set if you have. So, talking about the Spongebob's house, um, it's the smallest of the bunch. I know that for sure. It's very short. It's a very tiny house. And for some reason, they reverted back to three of the vegetation branches instead of four, which is a little weird. The four was definitely accurate, but I see why they went with the three. It does look, it does look a little better on the Lego itself. But, um, yeah, the exterior is pretty cool. I mean, the fact that there are stickers on there and whatnot, that's, um, pretty cool. Because I think M&R pointed this out where, um, if you don't, it's, this is where a part, this was like a spot where you actually f stickers are good. Because you can take off the stickers if you just want it to be a sponsorship house and you don't want to be in the party aesthetic. Which I guess, yeah, that's really cool, honestly. And, um, you know, the exterior is pretty great either way. I really do like it. It's like the other sponsorship houses. You know, maybe a little more red than the other ones, which is definitely not what I like. But it's still, it's still pretty good. Otherwise than that, the interior, um, it's eh. Honestly, I like, I like that they're trying with something here. I mean... I like, like, they actually added, like, a bowl for Gary, which I guess, you know, even though it's not as good as the one from 2009, I get, it still looks good, but the bed just looks stupid. I mean, the bed, SpongeBob's bed looks so good in the other two sets, but in this set, it just looks pretty stupid, in my opinion. Uh, you know, it's just all white and shit, like, what is this? Let's be real here, it's just, all they, they only made it like this so they could fit it in the set, let's just be real. Otherwise than that, though, um... You know, a lot more, everything else from the interior is actually pretty great. Like the, um, the Patrick portrait above SpongeBob, the door, you know, the shelf with the plant and, um, the weird, uh, hook lore thing in the, um, in the house and that Gary portrait or, um, you know, they're actually pretty cool to be honest. And they really add to the interior of this build. This is actually a pretty great SpongeBob's house in my opinion. Um, I don't really like the brown and the blue on the top of the interior though, but that's really, that's really besides the point. It's still a pretty great house. And, uh, moving on to Squidward's house itself. This actually is probably my favorite iteration of Squidward's house. We've only got two, but this one's really great. I definitely like the detailing of this one a lot. I really like a lot, like the windows and the, um, the stickers add to it. Definitely, they add to the aesthetic of the set. They really make it please me a lot just because that's what I like. I like stuff that adds to the aesthetic of the set. I mean, otherwise in the exterior, not to even mention the great, the fantastic interior of this uh, Squidward's house. I mean, it has three floors. Let's start there while the, the uh, old one really had one, if you think about it. I mean, it did have two, but the second one was just like a blockade. It was really weird, but this one has three floors uh the bottom floor is actually really cool that we get a um we get squidward and a clarinet and like some sh uh, some sheet music which is just i mean it's a really cool detail to add you know it gets gets part of that character in there in the set and it i mean it's great that they added that it's such it has a lot of interior detail second floor is a little dining room area with some squidward paintings which i mean that's just great to see lego just putting this stuff out there you know le putting all this detail i believe those paintings actually showed up in the show too which is you know, just a great detail to add, you know, there's that cool hanging light in the, um, cool hanging light over there, which, I mean, I get, you know, lights it up, but I mean, it's just such a cool detail to add to the set. Third floor is a little attic area, not much there, uh, but I, it, it's still cool to have, I mean, it's so cool to have that little area compared to having nothing. So, um, yeah, no, this Squidward's house is fantastic, in fact, this set is fantastic, and it's, it's such a good set, I can't, uh, this is one I definitely want to own. Definitely for sure I'm looking at and buying and uh, this is just such a fantastic set. You know what? Uh, seeking after this, let's move on to the next set of the ranking. Well,
Up next on the ranking is set 3827, Adventures of Bikini Bottom. Now, this is a fantastic set. Just one of a kind, to be honest. It was the first SpongeBob house set, and it's just so great. I mean, let's start out with the minifigs. We have the basic SpongeBob in this set, which, you know, pretty great figure, honestly. You know, he is basic, though. And then we have basic Patrick. You know, I've talked about him. I've regurgitated my points with him a hundred times. Gr amazing figure. Just, he's in so much. It's gotta talk about him all the time moving on to uh squidward who um is the only interesting figure of the set the only one that's different um squidward is uh not exclusive to the set because he's also in the crusty crab but um he's an awesome he's just a fantastic figure um i don't think his head print was as great as the molded head but i still think it was great with what they did with him but uh his torso is and legs are pretty much the same that are in the um the other Squidward, except for his hands. His hands are dark gray, which is weird. You know, Lego did this with, Cru with Mr. Krabs as well, but um, I definitely think they should have done something different uh, instead of the gray hands. I definitely think they should have used the hands that are the same color as the skin tone. I think they would have looked better. But otherwise than that, I love his torso print. Very basic, but it looks just like Squidward's. Just a fantastic figure, honestly, and a, just in a fantastic set. So let's move on to the builds. So talking about the SpongeBob's house itself, I mean, this is the biggest SpongeBob's house, and... Might be my favorite, I don't know. The other two really contend if if this and um exterior wise is probably my favorite. I really like what they did with the exterior. I think it's really great. It it kind of has the best of both worlds with the um with the 2012 one and the 2009 one. With the three leaves on the top and the less amount of red than in the 2012 one, you know, just more like 2009 one. But uh the exterior is pretty, you know, cool. I like the way that they make the um the pineapples bend. I really like the way they do that to make it so accurate. Otherwise, in the exterior, though, the interior is a little eh on this, um, SpongeBob's house, to be honest. I don't really care for the basketball stuff. I don't really get why that's there. I guess it was to sell more sets, but, I mean, I think this set would have sold either way with the basketball stuff or without it. It's just kind of weird. I don't have it in my build. I actually might want to put it in my build just to keep my, um, you know, my build 100% complete. I mean, otherwise than that, though, to be fair, I mean, the pineapple's actually pretty great. The bed build's pretty fantastic, honestly. It looks very accurate to the one from the show. Well, not... Not in that sense, you know, because the one from the show is like, has this certain pattern that this one doesn't have. This one's all blue, but you know, it's still a pretty great build to get. And the fact that it's, um, it has the alarm clock that, um, the bed actually has rubber bands in it. With the, uh, alarm clock, you pull it out and the rubber bands joint it up and it just goes flying. Like, you can put your SpongeBob on there and he just goes flying. And it's just a really cool feature for a really cool build, to be honest. Um, Moving on, we have Squidward's house, and Squidward's house is not really much of anything. There's a bottom floor of no interior, and there's a top floor that's just, um, uh, like, meant to help with the story of the set, where it's just the top floor is, uh, blockades for Squidward's house, where, you know, the jellyfish hit it, and it blocks the jellyfish from coming into Squidward's house. It doesn't really make much sense to me, honestly. The, uh, top floor blockades are just, it's, it's a super weird thing, the second floor blockade. It's so weird. I mean, the piece they use there is really cool. I know they use it in another pirate set, but that's about it. But it's a really cool, um, it's just, like, the exterior is really great for the build, but the interior is really nothing. And it's just kind of a stupid interior, in my opinion. There's nothing there. Uh, there's a fold-out at the bottom, like a fold-out window to look inside. I guess to give it, like, a little more room, but it doesn't really, or to enclose it, which doesn't make sense, because the top floor can't be enclosed. And the top floor just has nothing. There's just nothing on the top floor. It's just kind of a, the interior is kind of stupid, but the exterior is so fantastic, and it's just so iconic, and I love it. Uh, the Patrick's Rock, I get that it's, it's just, you know, two, it's just two rock pieces, but this, this has a charm to it that I say the other two are uh, just, that, that, the other two have, but I would say this one has the most. The, it just has, it just, like, so, there's a lot going on in the interior, there's a table, there's a chair, there's a, there's, a, of course, a, um, a, a TV there, a cool TV part, which is really cool, and, um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, and it has an antenna, um, on top of the rock piece. It's just, there's just a thing with this build where, like, okay, they filled out the interior very nicely. They didn't put any filler in it, like basketball hoops or anything. And it's just such a great build, to be honest. I really like this Patrick Star Rock a lot. And in fact, I like all these houses. I know I, I was shitting on them for some other things, but I really think they're all, they're all great in their own way, to be honest. Um, otherwise than that, we have a boat build, which is also just another cool boat build. You know, we get, we get a couple of these in, Spon in uh, other SpongeBob sets that I've already covered, and it's just, it's just great. And this set's just fantastic, to be honest. This is such a great set. I'm glad I have it. It's one of my favorites own, and yeah, it's so fantastic. So let's move on to number one on the ranking. Well, the sea. In first place, I mean, it seemed pretty obvious from the beginning. It's set 3825 Krusty Krab. 
What a fantastic set. This is another one I own, and I'm so glad to own it. I mean, just starting out with the minifigs themselves. The SpongeBob, sure, he's basic SpongeBob, and I love him so much. He's just such a great figure. Um, moving on, we have we have basic Squidward, who I, is just another great figure. You know, Squidward's just another great figure who, sure, the newer one's better, but this is still a great figure. Uh, we have Mr. Krabs in this set, our first iteration of Mr. Krabs. Just a great iteration. Looks very accurate to his... um. To himself in the shell. I mean that sure the nose doesn't fit right with the one of the shell the other one looks I think the other one looks a little better than this one, but it's still pretty great He also has gray hands, which is a little weird in my opinion. I think they should have given him red hands Definitely just so a weird oddity here and we got plankton as well plankton comes in this set and the chum bucket And he's a pretty great build uh, build. He's a he's one part. He's a pretty he's just a pretty great part You know one of my favorite parts of all time just fantastic Otherwise than that, though, we have the sensational build of the Krusty Krab itself. And I mean, wow, what a build it is. I mean, just starting off, we have that cool sign in the front that looks just like the Krusty Krab's clamshell sign. You know, just really delightful build there. Definitely looks very good, you know. Better than the one they did for 2009 for sure, which is just, you know, on top of the Krusty Krab itself. Uh, we have a dumpster build here, which is really interesting. I wouldn't expect a dumpster build in, um... You know, Spongebob set to be so detailed, but it really is, and it's really a great build, to be honest. Otherwise than that, we have the Krusty Krab itself, and I mean, oh man, the, um, the exterior just was, was so great. I mean, it's just so fantastic. Um, the, the way it encapsulates the Krusty Krab is great. The way they use the art pieces is just beautiful on this set. I mean, not to mention all the flag detailing that they also use that these ones this set. Why it's why I'd like to mention it here and not I didn't mention it too much in the 2009 segment because this was first and this really established all of it. But um they have this cool the cool door pieces which actually lead into the Krusty Krab which actually look very good. Surprisingly they don't use they uh, Lego SpongeBob in the early days didn't use like any of the door pieces we see nowadays. They used all the old molded ones which are really cool. I mean they're just such great pieces and I'm glad they used them. Otherwise than just the fantastic exterior itself I mean I have to talk about the interior. I mean, what a great interior for a Krusty Krab. They fit so much for a, um, for just a set, a $20 set. This set was $20 when it came out. I mean, we have the table in there, which looks a lot better than the one from 2019, where it was just, like, it was just the uh, table part and no, no actual chairs. This has the barrel chairs, which are very accurate to the show, and it looks, it just looks very good in Lego, to be honest. It looks, in fact, it looks fantastic. I really like what they did for the, um, for the table here. We have Mr. Krabs office, which is just wow fantastic. I mean, this is just fantastic Let's be honest here. We have that cool chair We just have that chair and then we have the cool cool desk that fucking great desk where you unravel it And it has the cryopatty secret formula just hidden in there. I mean so great just such a great play feature We also have that safe that cute that nice brick belt safe That's pretty big and like it, it's so it like fits a it, you could fit like a lot of like Lego money pieces in there And it's definitely it just looks so cool the fact that this is in the set looks so cool uh, Otherwise than that we have the um the uh kitchen cash register area That's a really cool area honestly it, it plays as with the play feature where you have a um play feature on the side of the um grill where you just you know you flick the um technic p piece and it just makes the Krabby Patty fly but it's just a really cool build the boat build looks very good the my one problem maybe that it doesn't attaches it doesn't attach to the crusty crab at all but I think it still looks great honestly and this set's just fantastic to be honest I love this set so much it's so great it belongs at number one on this list tell me how you guys feel about this ranking in the comments below I if you enjoyed it you know do whatever I don't give a fuck you guys are great you're the best fans in the world and see you on the next video